Ezekiel 37. From verse number 1, we are going to read it all through to verse 11. Ezekiel 37, if you are there, let us read together. The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley which was full of bones and caused me to pass by the roundabout and behold, there were very many in the open valley. And lo, they were very dry. And he said unto me, Son of man, can this bone live again? Jesus is asking you, can this bone live again? Can your business stand? Can your marriage stand? Can those things you are looking for stand? Let us continue in our reading. Say, can this bone live again? And I answered, O oh Lord God, thou knowest. Again he said unto me, Prophesy upon these bones, and say unto them, O oh ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. God says the Lord God unto these bones, Behold, I will cause bread to enter into you, and you will live, and I will lay sinners upon you, and will bring up flesh upon you and cover you with skin, and put bread in you, and ye shall live, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesy as I was commanded, and as I prophesied, there was noise, and behold, a shaking, and the bones came together, hallelujah, bones to his bones. And when I beheld, lo, the sinners and the flesh came up upon them, and the skin covered them above. But there was no bread in them. Then said he unto me, Prophesy unto the wind. Prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, Thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O bread, and bread upon this name, that there may live. So I prophesied as I command, as I as he commanded me, and the bread come into them and they lived and stood up upon their feet, an exceeding great army. Eleven. Then he said unto me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, Our bones are dry, and our hope is lost. We are cut off. For our part. May the Lord bless his reading in the name of Jesus. Amen. Please, you may make yourself comfortable in the presence of the Lord. Everlasting God, we thank you. We give you the praise, Lord. We come before you. Today being the very first Sunday of the month of November. In this month of our divine restoration, Lord Jesus, as we come before you, Lord, we receive the grace for divine restoration in the name of Jesus. I empty myself, Lord, so that the Spirit of God can find expression in me. Use me to minister your word to your people. Let your word come with fire. That as many that receive your word today, then we have an encounter with you that will transform their generation forever in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Abba Father. Elohim, we give you praise. We call for your presence in today's service, Lord. As many that are here today, Lord, as we have come into your presence, we will not go back the same. In the name of Jesus. We give you praise, our Father, to you be the glory. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I shall be teaching on what I call restoration by the hand of God. Restoration by the hand of God. There is no restoration in the life of a people or anyone without redemption. Redemption is accomplished with restoration. Any life you find, any life at all of a person or a people where the glory of God is missing, in that life, the mercy and the grace of God will be missing. And for that life to find expression or the Spirit of God to find expression in the life of that person, 
There is a law in the spirit or a law of repentance. The Bible says in the book of Ephesians chapter 1 from verse 7, it says, in whom we have redemption through the blood it said by grace, through his riches by grace. So for any life to not receive restoration of God, that life will first of all encounter what is called redemption. And redemption will not come in the life of anyone without total and genuine repentance. We saw it in Exodus, how that the people of Israel, when they sinned against God, when they were held captive for years, in the land of Egypt. The moment they realized their mistake, they repented of their sin, cried to God, there was a total restoration upon them. The Lord did not just redeem them, He did not just deliver them, but He restored to them the years that those people have used them. The Bible says they find favor in the hand of the Egyptians. They find favor in the hand of their tax master. Before they left Egypt, the Bible says they went back to their taskmaster and demanded for their gold. They demanded for silver and every good treasures of the land. And the Bible says there was never a place recorded in the Bible where the Egyptians denied them. The Bible says they were giving it to them. Why? Because the hand of God was upon them. For the hand of God to be upon a man or a person, there must be repentance and acceptance. When you repent of your sin and accept Christ, the redemption of God comes with grace. And the grace of God is what makes a man rich. The grace of God is what restores a man. So in a life where the grace of God is found, that man, you will see restoration. The Bible says, I will restore to you the years which they can't come on in 12 chapter 2 from verse 25. The years which they can't come on. The years with the caterpillar, the years with the enemy has stolen. Who are the anchor? What are the caterpillars? These are destinies. These are powers that have helped destinies. These are men or women that swan that over their dead body will you move forward. These are people in your family that have sworn that you will not get married. These are men and women in your family that said, Yes, you have traveled alone. Yes, you have gone abroad, but you will come back empty. These are the caterpillars. These are the cankerworms. And what they do is that they eat you all gradually. They don't just kill you. What they do is that they eat you every day. They take your years. They take your years. They take your time. They take your month. Things that you were supposed to acquire within two months, you end up suffering for ten years to acquire something of two months. By the time you know it, you are already above age for marriage. By the time you know it, time has happened to you. These are the tricks of the enemy. But the Lord said, I have come to Zion to restore to you that years which they have taken to you. To restore to you that husband whom you are looking for. To restore to you that wife that you are looking for. To restore to you that your money that is in the hands of the wicked. He said, I, the Lord, has come to restore them to you. The Lord has come to Zion. He said, unto them who have repented of their sins in the house of Jacob, I have come to redeem them. And if you go to the book of Jeremiah 15, the Bible told us from verse 21, that I will redeem you and I will set you free. I will deliver you. The deliverance of God brings prosperity. It is in the place of deliverance that sources are made. It is in the place of deliverance that men receive total breakthrough. You cannot receive total breakthrough when you have not been delivered. You cannot receive total breakthrough outside deliverance. And the one who has the capacity to deliver anyone is no other person but Jesus. That is why Ephesians 1, 7 told us that in whom we have redemption. The redemption with God is through his blood. The safety and the deliverance is by his blood. And it did not just redeem us. The Bible said, through grace, we receive riches. Riches to eternal life. Hallelujah. Amen. In Ezekiel 37, from verse 1 to verse 11, which we just read, the Bible says, and the hand of Jehovah took me. So the hand of God is what delivered 
towards the man. When the hand of God comes upon a man, people will begin to answer to you. When the hand of God comes upon a man, nations answer to you. That is why the Bible told us in the book of Isaiah 55, 5, the Bible said, And you shall call to nations, and those nations you do not know them. He said, Those nations that knew you not, these same nations are run to you to answer to your call. Why? Because the hand of your God is upon you. So when the hand of God is upon a man, even things that you do not deserve, they come to you. When the hand of God is upon a man, the job you do not deserve, this job comes to you. Even in the place where you are rejected, when the hand of Jehovah comes upon you, you are being accepted. Not because the land trust check your certificate and ask it that you are qualified. No. What qualifies you is the hand of Jehovah. So when the hand of God comes upon the man, he begins to attract favor. We saw all that the Bible told us in the book of Esther that when the hand of God come upon Mordecai, this same Mordecai who was sitting always at the gate of the king, who was just a common beggar, he was just a people that is sitting at the gate of the king, begging for arms, begging for money, only to feed themselves. But the day the hand of God came upon him, the Bible told us that this man was not just taken away from the gate, the Bible said he sat at the table of the king and he began to eat in the same table with the king and the life was transformed. His destiny was transformed. Why? Because the hand of God was upon him. Hallelujah. Amen. Ezekiel 37 verse 1 to 11, the Bible said, and the Lord took me to a valley and I saw dry bones. What did you see in your life? What is it in your life that are dry? What is it in your life that you see impossible? These bones were dead. These people were dead and buried. If you read verse 11, the Bible said, and the Lord was speaking to Ezekiel, and the Bible said, the Lord said unto them, he said, these bones are dry. They say we have been forgotten. They say we have been cut off from the surface of the earth. He said our life has been useless because God has forgotten us. These bones were dry in the valley. These bones were buried in the valley. They were rejected and forgotten. These were destined not for fame. Some of those people were lawyers. Some of those people were supposed to be doctors. Some of those people were supposed to be engineers. Some of those people were great men. But those destiny were cut short. And the Bible said they were buried. And when the hand of God came, when the hand of God rest upon them, these bones did not just come back to life, but these bones received a new dimension. The Bible told us that when the breath of God came upon them, these bones came back to life together. The bones sat together. The bones stood up. And those bones became a great army. How can an army of God be cut short in the valley? These were the children of Israel that were destroyed by the wickedness of the wicked. These were men that were destroyed by the enemy. These were men that were destroyed by powers that were above them. But when the hand of God come upon the man, there is no power that can stand against him because there is no man that can stand before my God. There is no one that can contend with Jehovah. There is no one that can fight God to battle. There is no battlefield that can size my God. So when God comes into the life of a people, when God comes into the life of a person, when God comes into a life of a family, that family life is transformed. That is how we saw also in the book of Judges, how that Gideon was restored back to his original position in Second Pentecost. The Bible told us that the one man that is proud, the moment he cried to God, what happened back in Second Pentecost chapter nine, from verse ten, the Bible told us that immediately his life was restored. He became a great man. He was great from the beginning, but there were powers that kept him. He was great originally. That was the plan of God upon his life. But powers that held him down could not allow him to move forward until the hand of God came upon him. The Bible said the moment the hand of God came upon him, his life was restored. He was not just restored. He was made honorable. He was not just restored, but he was made different. The Bible said among his brothers, he was honorable. But this was the same person rejected, rejected, and forgotten. But the power of God came upon him and overtook him. And the moment the hand of God touches him, his life changed. I don't know who among you sitting here 
regardless of what you are going through, no matter how tough it may look like, I don't care to know because I know of a man, I know of a person whose name is Jesus, the Son of the living God, the Christ of the Lord, the one who died that I may live, the one whose life was cut short for me to live, the one who paid on the drops of Calvary, that even though I sin and I know that the penalty for sin is death, and unfortunately. In 
and I may thank the Lord who said, Take us together, shall not happen. Speak the word, it shall not come to pass. Therefore, I come to speak against those words that was people spoken against you. And I declare and I decree by the mouth of Jehovah, by the power that raised Christ from the grave, I declare to your life restoration. I declare to your life divine restoration. I speak to your life divine restoration. Whatever that was done against you, whatever that has been done, whatever they are planning to do, whether to renew their sacrifice, because the sins that you are seeing here, so many of you, they have decided, they have concluded in your village that you must come back empty. You are supposed to have even gone back. With all they did, you are supposed to have gone back. But the hand of God is still keeping you. And they are wondering what is happening. They are going to another happening to change. Help me to change. Why is this person still in Dubai? Why is he still there? The sacrifice I gave you the last time is not enough. Tell me that we give a higher sacrifice. I want her back. I want him back. Today, I come to announce to you that if there is anyone in your family that is going around from one place to another, from one kingdom to another, from one happiness to another, with your picture, with your image, announcing to them that you will not amount to anything. Today I see Jehovah killing those enemies, bringing them down in the name of Jesus. When God wants to restore a man, the first thing God will do is that he will destroy those enemies that stand before you. Because as far as long they are still alive, no matter how much you try, they are sacrificed. They will always go for a higher sacrifice. Even if they cannot stop you, they will delay you. The Bible says in the book of John 10:10, 10, 10, He said, The thief cometh not, but to steal, kill, and to destroy. They came to steal your destiny. They came to kill your life. They came to destroy your glory. That is the plans of the wicked. That is what they come to do. Who are those thieves? Some of them are your uncle. Some are even your own biological parent. Some are even your mother, your father. Those people don't care. They don't care about anybody. All they care about is that position. Because there is, that position gives them power. And that power is what they are looking for. They don't care if they go out at one day, they are still flying. That fly in the night that they don't need to pay ticket for is what is giving them job. If not, how can a man say? Why can the Bible say there are men that will stop at nothing until they do someone evil? He said, sleep is taken away from their eyes. That means all through the night. When they have not found anyone to do evil, they cannot sleep. When they have not found anyone to bring down, they cannot sleep. They will begin to imagine how come today no one has gone down. How come today I have not done evil to anyone? Anyone that has been going around from place to place, from kingdom to kingdom, harvest to harvest, order to order. I did not write the Bible. It is written. And the word of God is a man. And a man is forever. The Bible told us in Psalm, it said he respects his word, even more than his name. So if it is written that the wish should not live, then therefore they should not live. The problem with our generation today is that we seek power, but we don't want to dwell. In the place of dwelling, that is where the power of God is released. It's in the place of dwelling, in the place of relationship with Jehovah. That is where fire comes upon the man. And without fire, you cannot bring them down. Before Elijah could bring down those vows, before he could bring down those altars, he caught fire. He said, at my voice, he did not consult God when he was about saying that word. Because he knew within himself that he had carried this fire. Because he has done in the presence of God. He has dwelt in the presence of God to a level that he knew that he had carried the fire of God. So he don't need to consult God. But he said, at my voice, he said, if I be a man of God, which he knew that he was. And then he said, let fire came. And immediately fire came and consumed them. It is until you come to a place where you carry the fire of God, the DNA of God that is fire. The problem is that some of us don't know that there is an aspect of God that is for fire. God is not just merciful. You may know him as a merciful God. You may know him as a God forgiving. You may know him as a healer. You may know him as a miracle worker. But there is an aspect of him that is fire. That fire aspect of him is what is more important in our 
generation today. If you must succeed in our generation today to find expression in this generation, if you must be recognized in this generation, what you need to do is be without the dwelling place. It is when you get to the secret of secret, that is where fire is being released. It is when you go to a dwelling, that is where fire is released. If you read the book of Exodus, the Bible told us that when Moses went down to pray in the mountain of God, it was in that place he encountered fire. And God came to him in the form of fire and spoke to him from that moment, from that time. His life changed forever. Moses, who was just an ordinary man, just like you and I, went there to pray. He's just a shepherd boy that went there to pray. But the moment he encountered Jehovah, the Bible told us that he was not just made a deliverer, but what he became is cause. The Bible said, Today I have made you cause unto Pharaoh. That means automatically, before he was sent to Pharaoh, God decided to impute himself a name. God entered into him and made him God. So when he appeared before Pharaoh, it was not him that Pharaoh was saying, but Pharaoh was saying God in him. That is why Pharaoh could allow the people he had held captive for years, for generations. You will know how many generations has come and gone in that land of Egypt that for a man to just release you, you think it's easy for an enemy to just release you. It is not easy for an enemy to release you. It is not easy for an altar to release you. For them to release you, fire must be born. For them to release you, fire must come. So when fire comes, they have no choice. The Bible said the moment they appear before Pharaoh, everything begin to work around for God. And those people who have been held captive, the Israelites who labor day and night, all fulfilled, their destiny transformed, their glory came, and they were restored, not just being restored, but they took everything that the Egyptians had held from them. They restored to them, God restored back to them, because the man went somewhere to pray, and the alignment of the spirit, the people knew that in the realm of the spirit, there is a man praying, and then they in one accord came together and accepted God and cried to God. The moment that happened, a man came. Today, I don't know who is that man that is supposed to deliver you. I don't know who is that man that is supposed to restore you to your glory. Some of you sit here today, from this moment, from this day, in your place of work, things will begin to happen that you will marvel that there is a God in this place. In your place of work, in your place of environment, in your working place, in your offices, in your business, life will begin to transform. Some of you who have been rejected several occasions, not because you are not beautiful, but when men came today, they come and tomorrow they are gone because something is resisting them. There are boys that are speaking evil against you. There are boys that are saying no to the yes of God upon your life. It is an error if you are still working at the age of 60. What are you still working for? At the age of 60, you should be retired, be eating from the fruit of your labor because we have a God that blesses the works of the hands of people. So if the work of your hand is not blessed, time for you to assess yourself and go back to God in repentance, in total communication. The Bible said you will send nations to you and nations will hear your voice and they will not come to you because you told them. They will come to you because of your God. And when nations come to you, what they do is that they return to you, they give to you. In this land, if you are privileged today to have an encounter with one of the sheikh, if you are privileged today to have an encounter just a minute with one of them, your generation will be transformed forever. I see my God in that place of war. Your destiny is about to be transformed. In that marriage, your destiny is about to be transformed. In the name of Jesus. Today, I just want to lay foundation on this restoration. I will continue from next week. The Bible says they cry and say, We have been forgotten. Our life has been rejected, dejected. But when God came, Things turn around. Can you open with me to the book of Luke, chapter 4, from verse 18? Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. The book of Luke, chapter 4, from verse number 18. Who is there? If you are there, shout hallelujah. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because he had anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He had sent me to heal the broken hearted. So Jesus was not just sent to preach only the gospel to the poor, but the anointing that Jesus received is also to heal. Alright? 
and then to preach and deliverance to the captive. So whoever that is under the captivities of the wicked, Jesus came that you may be set free. That is one of the reasons why he came. It's not just for him to be hung on the cross. It is not a good thing to be hung on the cross. If you think it's easy to be hung on the cross, just carry the cross. Then you will understand that it's not easy to be hung. Not to talk of going to the grave. But he came, was hung on the cross. Why? Because he needed to deliver you. If God will not deliver you, you cannot go forward. Hallelujah. Set the captive free and the covering of sight to the blind. To set at liberty them that are oppressed. Are you oppressed in your life? Are you oppressed in your destiny? Is something oppressing you? Has something said you will not succeed? Is the marriage not coming forward? Have you applied over and over and over again to travel and it's not working? Have you applied in different companies and they are not calling you? Today the Bible says Jesus has come to restore it to you. It does not matter how many times you have been rejected in that place. It does not matter how many times they have rejected you. But today when you go back to that place you will be accepted in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Read with me the book of Amos chapter 9, verse 14 and 15. Are you there? Who is there? Hallelujah. Amen. And we read together. And I will bring back the elders of my people Israel. And they shall build the waste city. And inhabit them. They will not only build the city, but they will inhabit them. So many people have built a building and they never lived in it. So many people. Some uncles, aunties, kids have brought some money home for their family to build them a house. And they build these houses for them. But the day they come to Nigeria or to Africa, whichever country they are, those same people who they sent money to their own biological family send people to kill them because they don't want them to live in this house, they want to inherit the house. So the Bible is telling us here that you will build this city and you will stay in that city. You will build your house, you will stay in your house. You will build your marriage, you will stay in your house. Your father will take you out of your marriage in the name of Peter. Let us continue. And there and is a plant vineyard and drink the wine from there. There shall also make gardens and eat the fruit of them. Let us sit here. There shall plant and they will eat of it. Have you not heard in the book of Judges that the children of Israel will plant, I think Judges chapter 6. The Bible says they will plant and when it is time for them to harvest that which they have planted, the enemy will come from nowhere, devour it, take it away from them. These enemies are enemies of their destiny. These are enemies that don't want them to live. Because when a man is taking what is supposed to be yours, when a man is taking what is supposed to make you live, this man does not want you to live. Because if you don't have food to eat, you don't have money to live, you will die. So the Bible says they came every time when this you have the cross is about to be harvested. They will come and harvest what does not belong to them. These are thieves in the night. And the Bible told us in the book of Matthew, he said, why men slept? He said, the enemy came to sow cows. What do they come to sow when you have planted your seed? What is that thing they came to sow? What is that in your destiny? Because of your place of placenta, because of where they buried your placenta, because of the hospital you were born, because your parents were ignorant. The Bible called them sleeping. They said, when men slept, it does not necessarily mean when you are sleeping at night. When you are ignorant of something, it means you are sleeping. Because your parents were ignorant. They did not know that the placenta those people told were for something. They did not know that the placenta they gave to someone to help them bury was not buried. But this placenta was used for something. And today you are suffering because your placenta was in the hand of an enemy. I come to cry to you. I come to cry to Jehovah. And I come to make a pronouncement. The Bible said in Ezekiel, he said that the Bible said prophesy. And he said, I prophesy as I was commanded. I come to prophesy upon your life and your destiny. If your destiny has been held captive, if your glory is in the mouth of a lion, if your destiny is on any evil altar, today, by the anointing of the Holy Ghost and by the power that rest Christ from the grave, I command them to come forth. I command them to come out. the strength of your repentance that redemption comes. 
when you are genuinely repentant and cry to God, it's now of Him to affect what is imperfect in your life. The imperfection cannot be made perfect without redemption. And redemption cannot come in the life of a person without repentance. Because God lives in a holy place. God is only found in a place that is holy. God is found in a life that is righteous and holy. So for God to fight for you, he must be in you. And God cannot be outside you and fight for you. He must come to you and fight for you. He said, I came to Zion. Upon Mount Zion there shall be deliverance. Not just deliverance, there shall be holiness. And the house of Jacob shall possess their possession. So for the house of Jacob to express possession, there must be holiness. Holiness must be a key point. So if you are not holy, God cannot fight for you. So if you know that your life is not attaining the level by which you think and thought that you are supposed to be, then begin to assess yourself for holiness. By the time you are done with this, by the time you know this, Jehovah will come and fight for you and restore your glory that was stolen in the name of Jesus. Another destiny that was restored, gloriously restored, is the life of Job. If you read from Job chapter 1 to verse 42, to chapter 42, in chapter 42, verse 20, the Bible says when he prayed, 20, 22, the Bible says when he prayed for his friend, he said he was restored. Not because he mourned, not because he complained. The moment he has looked around himself and he knew, he knew within him that I'm not a sinner, he began to pray for his friends that were telling him to cause God. Because the Bible says in his time of affliction, in his time of sorrow, in his time when he was going through difficulty, the people who were supposed to stand by him, they came to him and said, I know that you have sinned against God. That is why God has brought this upon you. If you have not sinned against God, God will not do this to you. But they don't know the mind of God. It was just a test. And why God tests this man? It's because God knew that this man would not fail him regardless of what. God knows the intent and the heart of everyone. That is why the Bible says, when that day, he would judge even our sacred sin. The sin that you thought of, but you have not even done it. The things you imagine, but you have not done it. God knew them and he said, we judge, judge all of this. If God is to judge all of this that you have not even thought of, do you know how many of us have killed people with our imagination? Do you know how many of us when people hurt you? You have not done it, but you said in your heart, if I have the privilege, I will kill this person. You have not killed that person. That is what the Bible is saying. But Job stood by his hand and said, I know, I know, I know for sure that my Redeemer lives. The one who gave me those will give me again. The one who blessed me before will restore me. I know that my Redeemer lives. I come to tell someone today that in your inner, that in your second place, one thing I want you to know is that your Redeemer lives. The God who can change the life of someone in living. And when God lives in the life of anyone, when God is found in the life of anyone, that life attracts favor. The Bible says in his suffering, in his pain, he never uttered a word against God. He never said something evil against God. He stood firm in his faith with God because he knew his God. The Bible says those that know their God, do you know your God? Those that know their God, and in his waiting, in the place of his waiting, the Spirit of God find expression in him. And the moment the Spirit of God came, the Bible says he was restored. And the latter end of Job was better, 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 better than his beginning. The Bible went on to explain to us that his skin was that of a three days baby old child. That a man who was already old, whatever he had before, the Bible said it was by strong what he had was given to him. So when God allowed him to pass through, the Bible said, Oh, you may suffer for a while, but I will restore you. When you know and recognize me, I will restore you. And God came and restored everything to him, multiple ways that he could not lose anything that he loses, but he gained them in eternal. We are going to cry to God today. After this prayer, after this preaching, we are going to cry to God today for total restoration. The Bible said he was restored. He was restored. His hands were blessed. And men that left him came back to him. The people, even his own very wife, who enjoyed and was a partaker of his blessing when he had. This woman was the one flying everywhere with his money. This was the woman who was in charge of everything. Because Job was a good man. 
and if Job is a good man, that means he allowed his wife to do whatever they want. The Bible will say at any time when the children left the presence of Job, whether they have sinned against God or not, Job will go before God and make a sacrifice to God and say, God, perhaps my children have sinned against you. I don't know if they have done it, but even if they have done it, sinned against you, please forgive them. That is how perfect this man went before God. And God sees his heart. So when the devil came among the garden of God, God was to let the devil know that even in all you have done, even in all what you have planted in the heart of people on earth, there is still a man on earth that still trusts and believes in him. There is still a man on earth that will never, never succumb to anything regardless of what he goes through. And the devil said, it is not possible. And then the game began. And the Bible told us what the devil did to him. But at the end of the day, when God, the hand of God, and his body found expression in God. Devil left him and he was restored. And you will see that the Bible says the dry bones came back to life. They did not just come back to life, but these were a sitting great army of God. These were army of God. Their life were cut short. Their destiny were cut short. But the woman came and restored it. Today, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the Son of the Living God, my master, whom I serve and I believe. If there is anything that is dry in your life, if there is any dryness, if you are experiencing dryness in destiny, if you are experiencing dryness in marriage, if you are experiencing dryness in finances, if you are experiencing dryness in your health, in the name of Jesus and by the power that rest life from the grave, I come to announce to you restoration. I come to announce to you restoration. Restoration in your finances. Restoration in your destiny. has been bedeviled by one thing or the other. It might be challenges of it. It might be challenges of finances, marriage. But each and every one of us here today, there is something within you that you move within yourself, that you are looking for. Something that is giving you a sleepless night. Something that is making you to cry. Something that you have taught and worked your mathematics but is not coming true. Every one of us sitting here, there is something but me. And God said, I will restore to you that years, that years, that years that the caterpillar, the canker worm, that the enemy of your father, the enemy of your mother, the enemy of your destiny, the wickedness of the wicked had come to steal from you. I will restore them to you. And I will restore to you a million for today in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let us take another scripture quickly because of time. Hallelujah. Amen. Isaiah 61 verse 7. Isaiah 61 verse 7. The Bible says, For your shame you will have done. Because they have made you shame. God said you will have done. Amen. I said the Lord said you will have done. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Turn to somebody and say you will have done. Hallelujah. Amen. And he said, And for confusion they shall rejoice in their portion. Therefore, in their, in their land they shall possess the double everlasting joy. God said you will possess the top everlasting joy. Amen. The top everlasting joy. Amen. Whatever was stolen from you, God is giving it back to you top. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Whatever the enemy had taken from you, Jehovah said, I will give it back to you top. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Today, the God of heaven, the one that seated on the throne, and look at men on earth and love. Today, that same God will restore you. Amen. The God that restored you will restore you. Amen. The God that delivered the Israelites will deliver you. The God that restored George will deliver you. The God that restored every man on earth that called upon him. For the Bible says, whosoever that call upon the name of the Lord, he said, there shall be saved. Every single person that has called upon the name of God, 
God said them. Today, as you are going to be calling upon his name, he will deliver you. In the name of Jesus. Can we quickly take the last scripture? Jeremiah 30, verse 17. Jeremiah 30, verse 17. For I will restore health unto you. Are you suffering for sickness in your body? Is there a hidden secret of sickness in your body? We saw last week in the book of Matthew, chapter 9, verse 20. The Bible said there was a woman of the issue of God. He said the moment her hands came in contact with the garment of Jesus, the hem of the garment of Jesus, her life took a new dimension and her life was restored. The Bible says that dryness came because she was having an overflowing of blood. But the Bible says the moment they were touching, there was an expression. It said her life experienced total healing. Jehovah said, For I will restore health unto you. If you are suffering any sickness today, in the name of Jesus, Jehovah will restore you. And I will heal thee of thy wound. If there is any wound, Jehovah will heal you. Whether wounds of finances, whether it's finances in marriage, whatever it is in destiny, whatever it is in glory, today Jehovah will restore you, says the Lord. Because they call thee an outcast, saying, This is Zion, whom no man seeketh after. There are people who they already concluded. I say this one, forget it, nothing. Nothing can be done about this one again. We already forgotten him. Have you not heard that there are people in family that when you call their name, they say, just forget this one. The Bible said when a man of God was sent to a house to anoint one of the child of a man, he brought his children that he thought this were the best. And the Bible says, God never accepted any of this. When the prophet asked him and said, Do you still have another child? He said, mm, I think. How can you think about your child? But the one they think of is the one that God needs. Because you have been rejected today, God needs you and he will restore you. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. It is at the strength of your understanding of the word of God that brings deliverance. It's at the strength of the word of God in you that you know that brings you breakthrough. It is the strength of the understanding of who God is that delivers you from the hands of the wicked. With your power, you cannot be delivered. With your connection, you cannot be delivered. With your education, you cannot be delivered. It's at the strength of your understanding of who God is that deliverance is sure. Today, I want to announce to somebody that the only way and the only thing that can deliver you is no other person but my Savior. His name is Christ of the Lord Jesus, who came to die so that you may live. As you accept him today and cry to him in repentance, I see Jehovah restoring you back to life in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now we rise up.